Once you've figured out the concept and created your landing page workflow, you need to add specific fields to the form which your visitors will submit. In this video, I want to show you how to edit the form of your landing page. So I've already logged into my ACT database and I've clicked Marketing Automation in the left navigation. From here, let's click Landing Pages at the top. Now we need to locate the landing page we want to use from this list. I'm going to edit my monthly newsletter sign up by adding a form to it. So I'll click this and this loads the workflow for my landing page. From here, I'm going to click the blue form box and then I want to edit this form. So I'll leave that selected and I'm going to click go. Now on this screen, we can design the landing page for my form. The page name at the top has already been decided but I can still determine what will show up in the title bar of the browser by entering something on the page title field. I'm going to leave mine as monthly newsletter sign up. Next is the submit button text. This is the text that will appear on the submit button itself and I've made mine say sign me up. Beneath that progressive profiling lets you gather information from visitors over time without scaring them away with one huge form. Maybe you'd start this time with first name, last name, and email. And then once they fill out this form, the next time they come visit your website, you could give them a set of new questions such as phone number and company name. I'm going to skip this step for now and I'm going to go to the actions menu on the right and I'm going to click save. Okay, now let's add some fields to our form. And the easiest way to begin is to add a pre-built template that contains several fields already. So from the actions menu, I'm going to add a template and the template I want to add is the contact us template. So I'll click use template and now we'll see the fields that it adds full name, email address, company name and phone number. And this is also automatically going to map all of these fields to the correct fields in my act database. But whenever you collect information like this, I recommend protecting yourself by adding a permission checkbox that explains exactly why you're collecting this information and also what you plan to do with it. You can find one of these checkboxes by going to the actions menu again and choosing add template. And the template we want is a checkbox called GDPR. So I'll select that and click use template. Now this GDPR checkbox is legally required in some areas of the world. So I recommend just adding it anyway. You might've noticed that this also adds a second email field into your form. And since we don't need two email fields here, I'm going to click this X button to delete that email address field. Now, as we scroll down again, we're going to add some text here that says exactly why we're collecting this information. So let's click the pencil button to edit this text. And then we're going to paste in some text that I wrote earlier that says by submitting this form, you agree to receive no more than one email newsletter each month from me. You can opt out anytime by clicking the unsubscribe link in any of the newsletters. All right, so I like that. I'm going to go to the actions menu now and click save and return. And now we can see that this text has been changed. Beneath that is the checkbox itself. This is from the user's perspective. And my text says by checking this box, you, meaning the user, are confirming that you wish to sign up for my newsletter and all my communications. You can be as detailed as you want with this. To edit it, all you have to do is click the pencil icon as before. But I like the way it is now, so I'm going to go to my Actions menu at the top and click Save. Now this is all good so far if you just want to add a pre-built template of fields to your form. But what if you want to add other fields here? Let's say that I want to add a birthday field. That's not in any of my templates, so I'm going to go to my Actions menu and instead of adding a template, I'm going to add a control, which is basically a single field. Now in this drop down, you're going to see that there are many different varieties of fields, but I want to add a date field. Now you can do it this way, or if you know exactly where on your form you want to add this field, let's cancel out of this and do it a different way. Maybe I want to add it underneath phone number. If that's the case, click the plus button on the phone number field to add a question after it. So now I'll add the date field and click add control. And this takes me to my edit question screen. So here I need to enter the question. What am I asking them? Well, I'm going to say, what is your birthday? For default value, I'll leave that blank. I don't want to require an answer to this question, so I'll leave that unchecked. I don't want this to display on any of my report graphs. I'm going to leave the default width and height, but on the mapping to an act field, I do want to map this to 
my birthday field in my ACT database. Now I'll go to my Actions menu and click Save and Return. Okay, now I have created all of the controls that I want for my form. I have full name, email address, company name, phone number, and my new birthday field. And then beneath that is my GDPR permission field. At the top of the screen, I can click the Preview Page link to see how this is going to look to my end users. This looks pretty bland right now, so I think I have a little more work to do before I'm going to share this with anyone. For now, though, I'll close this extra tab, and I'm going to go to my Actions menu on the right, and I'll click Save and Return so that my work so far is secure. In the next video, I'm going to design a skin for this landing page so that it looks a little more attractive to my visitors.